the reason why the supply chain for RFID chips is heading in the right direction is because... Welcome back to another episode of Tech Made Simple. It's been a few weeks since I've posted on the channel, but there's been a lot going on in the industry and I can't wait to tell all of you about it in the videos I'll be posting over the next couple of weeks. Today's video, I will be discussing the supply chain and some of the details about the chip shortage that we've seen since the beginning of the pandemic times, as well as what we can expect for the upcoming years in terms of sourcing ICs or RFID chips. So I want to start off by getting some of the terminology squared away because for many of you that aren't interacting in the RFID industry on a daily basis, you may get confused when someone refers to the RFID chip as a different term. So many of the different terms that can be used to describe the same thing, the RFID chip are chip, IC, which stands for integrated circuit, ASIC, die, and even microcomputer. I've heard many different terms, but at the end of the day, when we're talking about RAIN technology, UHF, even HF technology, all of those different terms mean the same thing. So for those who aren't familiar with an IC or an RFID chip, I will point out exactly what it is by pulling up this. Here's an example of a RAIN RFID tag, and it's pretty obvious, but here's where the chip is on the RFID tag. Okay, maybe it's not so obvious, but let's zoom this in and getting closer. Hopefully that's not too blurry, but yes, it's the tiny little black speck that's placed at the center of this RFID antenna. So now that we know we are dealing with very, very small computer circuitry on these RAIN RFID tags or almost any RFID technology, let's dive into why the supply chain took such a hit over the pandemic in terms of being able to source chips and how that impacted a variety of industries, not just the RFID industry, but industries like the automotive. By now you've seen that automotive manufacturers, Ford, GM, all the, the big players that were waiting for chips so that they could place them inside their vehicles so that they could ultimately sell a finished vehicle. Through the pandemic times, one of the chip fab houses where the, the chips are fabricated at all the way at the, from the raw material stage, there was plants that were shut down due to the pandemic, which caused a rippling effect all the way still even affecting us in some regard today. Not only did that those plant shutdowns start that ripple effect, but demand also skyrocketed for the small integrated circuit technology. Fabricating chips is a very complex process that requires a lot of high dollar equipment as well as a lot of special processes to fabricate these tiny little microchips out of the different raw materials. That's why chip fab houses aren't just popping up all over the globe like a McDonald's or other retail stores in the world. I mean, there's a reason why there's only a few chip fab houses around the world. But there are some good trends that indicate that we are heading in the right direction in terms of increasing capacity for these chips coming into the, the years to come. So what things are being set in place today that are going to allow for that growth, not only capacity, but helping to even out the supply chain overall. So let's talk about exactly what's being done from the chip manufacturing level that's going to allow this to happen. One, understanding that the tiny little microchips, the format that those are delivered to manufacturers who are producing a variety of the chip technologies, but focus today on RFID, they are delivered to inlay manufacturers in what's called a wafer, which is basically a circular disc that houses hundreds of thousands of these tiny little chips on that disc. So over the last five years, Chip manufacturers have increased the quantity of tiny chips per wafer disc that's being provided to the manufacturers. So what does this do? 
it allows the inlay manufacturers to have less changeover when they're going to produce RFID inlays. So the other factor that allows them to put more chips on a wafer is the size of the microchips has significantly reduced over the last three to four years as well. The second thing is increasing the overall wafer size, going from the what used to be typical in the eight inch diameter wafers. Chip manufacturers are now increasing that size to 12 inch diameter wafers, which just adds to the amount of chips that they can place on those wafers. One of the drawbacks to a smaller chip size is you typically will see less memory that those chip manufacturers can fit into the design of those chips. So the good thing is we are seeing chips increase their sensitivity, which means you can read and activate those chips with less reader power. However, you're sacrificing some of the overall memory that is on board of those chips to not only get more chips on the wafer, but also you do see the boost in sensitivity. Again, thinking about from a retail and consumer standpoint in this, the more you buy in bulk, the better price. The same thing applies to this type of technology with these chips is the more chips that we can fit on the wafer and produce at one time, you typically see a decrease in the overall cost of the products. So chip costs have been going down from the manufacturing cost standpoint. However, due to economic times, some of that cost is starting to come back up because of, again, just where the economy stands. However, overall, from a costing standpoint to manufacture the products, that has, has been trending down over the past few years. Okay, so now I wanna talk about two points and or two different chip types that many of the main chip manufacturers today are trending toward. There's two types of chips available on the market and they will categorize those into two categories. And we have what we refer to as commodity chips. So just like commodity products, commodity chips are low cost and in this case, lower memory. So to get that lower cost, you're getting a smaller chip, but it also has lower memory. The other subset or other category of RFID chips are the, the value chips, which those are tip a little bigger, which does cause an increase in the cost on those chips. However, you're getting a lot more features built into that chip, which includes more memory, other features such as sensor capabilities, the ability to extract different types of sensor data from the chips, whether you're looking for temperature sensor outputs, capacitance sensing outputs, moisture sensing outputs, those types of features can be built into these value add chips because they have a little bigger real estate and they, there is a little bump in the cost there. But there's kind of two two directions that the main chip manufacturers are going to in today. We know that as of recently, Walmart has once again gone down the path of mandating RFID tagged items coming into their facilities and their stores. Because of the quantities that we're looking at, most of those products are looking at more of the commodity chips because of the volume. And especially for many of the suppliers to Walmart that are now required to tag their products in order to put them in the Walmart stores, they are looking for the most cost-effective options so that they aren't incurring a large investment to just get their products into Walmart stores. So the manufacturers of those commodity chips are seeing some of the benefit of the Walmart mandate. However, there are some catches to that mandate and that push that's surfacing within the industry today. Because of this push for RFID tagged products, there is also the need for standardized numbering systems within all of the variety of tag products going into stores such as Walmart. Well, because of the commodity chips getting smaller and smaller and the memory getting less and less, having a standard that can work into such a small memory size is proving to be fairly difficult. So that's why standards organizations like GS1, the Rain Alliance, are really working with these chip manufacturers to come up with standards that can fit into this 96-bit 
memory limitation of the commodity chips. With that being said, there's word coming around the industry that because of this limitation coming from the low memory commodity chips, that there is a need for higher memory commodity chips, so to speak. So low cost chips, but with higher memory. So what does that mean? Likely in the next, in the coming years, we are going to start to see higher memory chips that also fit on these 12 inch wafers that will allow for the cost to stay down. However, we will see that boost in memory, which will allow for better standards across those types of products. I hope today's video shed some light on what the RFID industry can expect from the chip suppliers, the chip manufacturers over the coming years. There's certainly still a lot of unknowns around this discussion. However, by asking the right questions to your RFID tag manufacturer or even your RFID inlay supplier, you can be sure to stay on top of some of these ever-changing supply chain factors that seem to be changing on a daily basis. With that, thanks for joining me today on Tech Made Simple. Make sure you leave some comments below on what other RFID topics you want made simple.